You think you know everything, don't you? Look at you. You haven't had sex in a while, have you? Uh, it's, it's been a day. A day. Two, two days. Two days. Two days too many. I sleep with my husband 15 times a day, minimum. friends so come on in welcome to fly on the wallet podcast get your hand out my camera oh, oh my I'm gosh picking nose. i'm picking if nose. you're watching this on youtube you know how annoying ben is being right now anyway welcome to fly on the wallet podcast the hey. show that where we talk about sex but also parenting. parenting and we give advice about your fucked up relationships your miserable marriages and recording it all for the world to see i'm your neighborhood friendly black girl amber and I'm Ben. Oof. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. You need a throat lozenge. No, no, I'm good. Did you miss me this weekend, baby? Did I miss you? Uh, yes, would be the right answer. But I also try to stay, keep myself so busy so I wouldn't miss you. So actually, I didn't miss you, but I would have if I stayed in the house. But I got my butt out of the house. Yes, you did. And I did something every single day. Oh, man. So many museums. Yes. Oh, tell the people where you went. I was in Napa for the weekend. Uh, I did a girls' trip with my Damn. line sisters, um, and while the trip was very fun, I it just it was such an impractical trip. Like it, it felt like the the first day I go to the airport, my flight is canceled. Yeah. So I'm I'm talking like 30 minutes before we're supposed to board. So they could have told us earlier during the day traffic. Now, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm having to fly to San Francisco, which is a one-hour flight. It's about a six-and-a-half-hour drive, okay? So, I'm, flight's canceled. Go back home. Second day, flight is delayed an hour. I like how you're telling me this as if I didn't know. Yes. And how this I, also inconvenienced me. I'm so frustrated. Speaking well, to I'm, the I'm talking to the listeners at home as well. Flight canceled the first day. Delayed the second day. Once you get to San Francisco, you have an hour-and-a-half commute to Napa Valley, and that which would have been split between six people if I would have met everybody yeah. at the airport. But because it wasn't, I paid $190 one way to go to Napa by myself. And it's raining. And That's it's freezing. That's groceries for a week. I That's know. A week or two of groceries. I know. So I was just like thinking about me and my, uh, one of my very close line sisters, baby. Like me and the baby were just like, why are we here? Like it's flooded outside. So you can't even like enjoy the vineyard. It just, yeah. I, that was a very long, too long, didn't listen. Napa was beautiful, but maybe we should have went somewhere else. You know, I, I love to hear about the history of a place. So did you learn any history about Napa? Anything about the wines? Did you do any wine touring? Nope. No, I went to the uh, spa. No, you didn't do a wine tour? Did you walk through the vineyards? No, because that all happened what day? Day one. Oh, so really? the first so, day, all the girls got there. And they they toured tour. like three wineries the first day. But my flight was canceled. You didn't try to like sign nope. up for something else? I was so already you, over. Did you just it rained. stay It rained the, the second day. Well, I went to the spa. Well, you put on boots. Rain is, you're from Georgia. I Rain happens all the time. I went to, uh, there was a cute little market that had, you know, fun okay. little foods and sweet treats and oysters and stuff like that. So I went to the market the okay. next day. But I know, really, I saw on the Instagram, I was watching you. Because you weren't you. really responding to me or sending me videos through text. So I kept Amber updated. I, I was sending her tons of videos. And I was responding to those videos. Y'all like, oh, know so I was cute. responding to you're Ben's like, video. Cute, but cute. I was also trying to be present. Uh -huh. With the crew. Uh, totally fine. I was totally recording reasonable. some things here and there, but I was, I mean, for the most part, I was pretty present. Uh -huh. Cool. Don't have a kid, the, don't have a kid then if you want to be present with your girls. Well, well, we'll we'll but we'll we'll get there in a minute. I went to the spa one day and the my massage was really good. And then like there were it's it's a it's a destination where of course a lot of bachelorette trips are happening, things like uh, that. So yeah. I couldn't even enjoy the little hot tub because there were a gaggle of bitches in there for oh. a bachelor party, a bachelorette party, just talking loudly about the dress and the makeup and the bride and the drama. And I'm oh, just like, that's disgusting. Will you bitches kill yourselves? Because <laughs> I'm trying to relax. Do, you could th like plug in a toaster, throw it inside there, yeah, and, and toss all it them. in the tub. Is is about where I want it to be. Aww. Then I went in the steam room. That was nice. So I still had a very good time. Many laughs were shared. Were you naked? You had just tits flying. Yeah, I, I got naked in the hot tub. Nobody yeah. else was naked in the hot tub. So I, of course that. That's a little awkward as well because people are looking at me like, bitch, this is not your home tub. But and I'm looking is. at them like there are no rules that says I can't be naked in here. I even asked one of the staff. I was like, I'm allowed to be naked in the tub, right? They were like, absolutely, miss. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, then why am I getting 
Uh, they're jealous looks. of you. They're jealous. They're jealous, they're of, jealous the of my stretch marks. They're jealous of my uh, I, your tits, my, my big your back ass. Yes. Oh yeah, we'll talk about big backs later. <laughs> but I love that ass. Your tits. Look at her face, everybody. She knows how to beat a face. Her then, makeup is improving. You told me you got some advice from a Gen Zer, right? I did. Yeah. The, the one and only Fanita has been giving me more and more makeup advice because makeup trends are changing. So you might have thought you had. Your your solo makeup down to a, a formula sheet, and then the next year the trends change. Yeah. So you have to you have to evolve your makeup. But you think it's it's getting better? It does look really Thank good. Thank you. You gotta you have I'm getting to getting better at blending. You have to dress up and go to LACMA with me because I took Wild to LACMA, which for those who don't know is the Los Angeles Contemporary Museum of Art. We have a membership there. We get free parking. It's like such a vibe. We, and we go there frequently. Yeah. And you go there at I least love, once twice a week. So great. So I went there and I saw this woman. She's this uh, black woman who was dressed in this like Alice in Wonderland garb, and she was just so stunning, and her makeup was like so cool. Yeah. And like I was like, I was like, you look amazing, and like Wild was like, wow, you know. And uh, but I feel like you should do something like that. You could sort cosplay, of go, cosplay, and go to Lakma. A lot of people I've seen a lot of people dress really nicely at Lakma, and That's they cool. stand and get pictures. Did you get a picture ever? You sent me so many videos. I, I just, know. I felt you, weird you asking. Like, I think when someone dresses up like that, they, yeah, they, they want, want people be, to ask. She smiled so big when I gave her that compliment because it wasn't like a creepy man compliment because everybody knows the creepy man. Like, hey, girl, nah, you, hey, look, let me... you, you look good. Well, okay, so when you say Alice in Wonderland, did she look like like the Mad Hatter? No, no, no. She had the blue dress. Oh, you know, so like she the looked blue like dress, Alice. Okay. And she had like... She had this um, this little like small little top hat, almost something you'd see from Alice in Wonderland or at the races or something. So it sounds like you had a good time this weekend without me. It was it was hard. It was hard without you. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I, I'm listening. I realize one, I need to start following you more closely when you do Wild's hair. That mm. was a huge takeaway. Um, all the mothers, the dads out there who are responsible. Well, the black dads, because they're the white women they're with, don't know how to do black hair. <laughs> but the black dads who have to do the hair, um, I, I, my sympathy. I don't is think they're doing it you. either. I don't think the black dads are doing it either. I think this shit is hard. It's hard to. I remember my dad once or twice when my mom was out of town trying to do my hair, and I was like, "What's going on? What's what are we doing, sir?" Okay, so all he can do a braid though. He can do a basic braid. I can't even do that. Oh, you don't know how to braid? I don't know how to. I braid. would love to teach you how to braid. I we even like to... plait it. Yeah. But yeah. also, you didn't know how to do this stuff, and you learned within months. What do you mean? Well, I've always known. How, I mean, I'm a black girl. I'm. I'm I had Barbies growing up. I've always known how to do a little something, something. Yeah, but you're watching YouTube videos and finding the parts and well, doing I'm, all that. I'm I'm getting inspired, but yeah. for the most part, everything I'm doing on Wild, I pretty much knew how to do. But everything to you can do, do I could probably do better, you know. So I oh. could. I just need the training. Okay. I guess I'll train you then. Uh, yes. Oh, one more thing about the girls' trip. It was so funny because even on, even on the last night, the girls' trip. Again, we all got along. We're all having fun, and we're and we're doing votes on the next place we should go to. Because I think we all, like, the the elephant in the room was that this trip, like, we love each other, but this trip was kind of a flop, y'all. So let's make, like, let's make sure the next place we go to is somewhere warm and tropical and beachy, things like that. So all the girls were like, let's put somewhere in the Caribbean in the hat. So everybody can write I, down. Can I defend Napa really quick? And then I want to go you, back. You haven't even been. I know, but I watched some YouTube vlogs about it because I was getting jealous. But apparently Napa has this traditional almost mediterranean climate that's unlike any other climate in the world i think like three percent of the population and there because there's mountain ranges on both sides so it keeps that temperature yes, sort of perfectly that's no for good wine. to me when it's raining though. i know yeah that was the i no, think i went to napa the wrong time of year i'm not yeah, shitting on napa so maybe we, we didn't plan y'all didn't plan all right okay so so you sit together Y'all should have just planned, let's come back here. Let's come back to Napa at a better time of the year. No, I, no. I don't love the, the hour and a half commute from okay. the airport. Like, that's insane. I really well, that's, and uh, I had yeah. the shortest commute. Yeah, like, you did. The other girls were coming from flew Georgia, four and, and a half, York five and, and a half hours from the East Coast yeah. to then sit in a car for another hour and a half that's to be fair. there just for a weekend. So y'all so are sitting around, commute. you're trying to figure out, okay, where do the girls trip? goes next right so we were like okay let's pick a place in the caribbean because some girls were like yo delta or southwest or somebody's doing this like if you book a trip to the caribbean it's not a better deal and then so we all start writing down somewhere in the caribbean some people are writing saint lucia saint croix yeah. jamaica whatever and so i wrote down turks and caicos so 
then one of the girls on the table was like, you know what, let's all just save money and let's just like let's just give Jekyll Island a try. I want to describe how does how how does Jekyll Island described sound to you? It sounds like I need to hide. Get it, Doctor Jekyll, and Mister yes, Hyde. Yes, I got I got I'm, the joke. I'm joking. For those of you who are not familiar with Georgia or like being, you know, on the like lower southern coast, maybe like coastal Carolina and things like that, Jekyll Island is a place <laughs> that that most Southern Georgian kids have probably been to sometime in their life uh, during like a, a fifth grade field trip. Okay. Like it's like Sapelo, St. Simon's. Like okay. these are now, while these are great destinations for when you grow up and things like that, we've all been there because that's like, is, is there something in New York that's like, we all went to this as kids. The well, New York trip, city is sort of the that girl way. scout trip. New York oh, okay. city. So a lot of people from Long Island upstate, they always do at one point, they head down to New York city. They but but y'all have some trip. smaller little Island up there that everybody's goes Coney Island. Maybe is that giving that? No, I mean, like as a vacate or exploring. I mean, maybe the zoo. But no, it's New York small City. That you went to. It's the museums. In I'm New just York saying, City. these are the bougiest bitches ever. They're dentists. They're they're OBGYNs. They're lawyers. They're attorneys. We don't need to be at Jekyll Island. Like, but we're, y'all, we're, y'all didn't go do it as adults. Maybe no, the adult I'm not. Go, I t- uh, the minute my last sister said, like, why don't we all just go to Jekyll? I was like, yeah. And while we're at it, why don't we just spend another weekend at the Okefenokee Swamp? Like. What what would what we be doing? What's the Okefenokee Swamp? Exactly, exactly. Is it exactly? It sounds like a vibe. It sounds like you. The Okefenokee beca- Swamp. Become like a biologist. No. Look at all. Like, the like why don't we micro- just go where they filmed Duck Dynasty? While we're at it, like it's just like why don't we just go sit in the Everglades, surrounded by mosquitoes right. and bugs? I'm gonna defend this person because and when you go bugs. go do parts of Jamaica, you're just supporting Chinese businessmen. You're not really helping the U.S. economy. Here we go. You are taking advantage of the people of the island. There's a form of like American imperialism that you're participating. So when you go to Jekyll Island, you're experiencing the what it's like to the the different part of America. You're putting your money back. So into because the of States. that, I should be vacationing it down to the swamp. Maybe down to Jekyll the Island. swamp. Maybe the swamp could be a whole vibe. And also, no. all these girls trips. By the way, all these girls trips. You're not like going to unique museums. Y'all are just getting drunk we on might. the beach and and which you could get What's drunk on the beach at uh, Jekyll Island. What's the t- no no no? We're not going to J- this manicure at Jekyll Island. No, call me bougie. Amber Amber call is holding Hollywood. up this uh, beautiful beautiful nails. They look so good on her. They I'm... wouldn't look good on anyone, but they look really good on her. Uh, okay. They're like imagine if there were like jaguars from all different dimensions and there was like jaguars with pink skin and black spots and jaguars with black skin and blue spots and jaguars with red skin and orange uh, stripes and that that type of thing. So it, it's really cool, beautiful nails. So you look great. You're wearing it so well. Thank you. But you're not going to see these at Jekyll Island. Okay. Call me bougie. Jekyll's not a dream destination. I was like, girls, I think we should go to Amsterdam in two years. Yeah, that would be... So that's a, that's and, a name note to Jekyll Island. Um, how many girls trips do you go on a year? You think I'm probably gonna go on two or three. What's the problem? Yeah, I have two friends. Three, three. People people like I hanging out with me. I think it's I'm more the three life or of the four. party. Three or four. The girls fall apart. They they were they were bickering before I got there. I bring everything together. I make you everyone laugh. laugh. Yeah, you're a people laughs. pleaser because of uh undealt with insecurities but will i'm not a people pleaser. in the same way that I'm i i jokes. struggle with like finishing a task and doing things right that's something i'm working on you're a people pleaser and it it's a huge advantage my problems don't really have an advantage but your trauma and insecurities have a nice advantage you know what that's sort of unfair like some people get trauma and their trauma response is like i'm a people pleaser which you get something from i'm it. not a people and pleaser. i'm, I'm and, a comedian you would thrive at the Okefenokee Swamp. <laughs> you really would. You've got that swamp face. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk about something that's viral right now. The first segment of our show today is called Hashtag Influence. It's time for the hashtag. Hashtag Influence. All right, Ben, guess what? Amber and Ben are out. There's a new it couple in town, okay? And their names are Miss Netta and Charles, okay? Do you know who Miss Netta and Charles are? Yeah. Did you know before si- I made the outline for the show? I did. Your sister showed me a, p- a bunch of videos. Okay, give me uh, your over best. The winter. Okay, give me your best uh, Miss Netta impersonation. Uh, here's some food for you to eat. 
eat the food. Don't do that. Is not what she says. That's what she says. She's like every time is like I made some new food. But what she has signature she has, line. Jaws, come here. Come get your dinner. See, you don't. You barely know it. The the line is Charles, your lunch is ready. Charles, your lunch is ready. Yes. Man, to have a woman cook for you. What a what a dream. Well, you Miss Netta's making plates. I just kidding. feel free to <laughs> I'm glad that you don't know to, how to cook. It's feel like, free to a cup a seat right next to Charles. A, it's like the gayest thing about you and I love it. <laughs> Miss Netta and Charles are uh social media icons at this point, to quote her. One time they got on got into a a, tip. Uh, a, a argument on live as she yells to Charles, we are social media icons at this point. I, well, this they is, sort of remind, she reminds me of you a little bit. Like, oh, I love Miss Netta. But but I think she's a little serious where you'll like get on my case in a joking way. <laughs> Man, we can't know? do this because we are social media icons, icons. at this point in at time. This point. Yeah. She says at this point in time. Okay, so I think this, so this is a, a black couple. Um, Miss Netta, I don't know if Miss Netta identifies as a trans woman, but she presents as a woman, she's feminine, and Charles is her man, okay? And I do know that Miss Netta is a little bit older than Charles, but there's something about Miss Netta's energy and behavior that's, like, super loving. Like, we all know yeah. a Miss Netta. She, like, literally got excited to make a meal for her man. And I think there's a lot of, I'm not sure if you've been seeing this on your algorithm, but there's a lot of, like, trad wives content being made right now if for those of you who don't know trad wives is like traditional wives which the right-wing conservatives are loving this it's this new trend of stay-at-home moms who are painting this picture of like my child doesn't eat goldfish so today i just woke up early i'm not going to be lazy i woke up early to make my child like homemade goldfish you're, so, you're referencing nara eat... specifically lucky uh, it's, what's it's been name? lots of them it's like yeah. we're going to talk today about how i homeschool all 11 of my children it's like this is like a new wave of these sort of uh traditional you sent me a religious video religious women yeah. uh acting like it is a fairy tale to serve their family every home cooked meal and they're making fresh bread and they're making and I, I mean, I'm not saying cuz I'm jealous it's okay to do that but there's always a little bit of like religious quotes that are in it it's like yeah. the the best way to have a, a amazing marriage never turn your husband down and 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 always have a hot meal ready and put on i put on the mennonite when he the comes mennonite home. woman we talked about a couple episodes there's this black mennonite woman who married a white man and um and i was sort of down with it like i i've talked about i do respect the mennonites qu quite a bit ex actually for one of the peace churches traditional mm. peace churches anti-war out of the, uh, just amazing the i think they live more like christ than most people but um she does they fall into that traditional role and right. she's like you this is how you be happy is that you submit to your husband specifically in his decisions and it's just so cringy you know? it's very cringy but like i said because it's becoming so viral and like a lot of women are seeing this and being like you know what yeah like maybe i do want to go back to this I, and i'm not saying like of course being a stay-at-home parent is a full-time job I'm talking about romanticizing, getting dressed and putting a ribbon in your hair and the birds are singing and never tell your husband no. And your husband is is the knower and say sower and decision maker yeah. of everything. And everything you do is to please him and to obey all the time. I, also, I'm I'm also OK with that. If you want to live your life like that, if you want to in terms of the BDSM language, if you want to be a sub. <laughs> Right, and that's the agreement, right? Be, and but it's this is, so fake. Like these women are just like not, setting not up for all camera rigs and everything like that. Not well, for all. I, them. I think it's just as cringy for me as like perfectly polished content as well. How about mm, that? Okay. So yeah. it's not so much the religious part for me. I think it's the, just the it's the my life is perfect. You can be perfect as well. If that's you do what this, I, it, yes. Well, that's what oh, my eyes about that. yeah. If I hate when like if just, you lived like me, you would be happy. Yes. Actually, I hate if you that. lived like me. You would probably be like, because no one can live like someone else and be happy. If you live like Amber, if you live like me, if you live like anybody besides what you want, your own, you know, method of doing things, you're going to be miserable. Because right, the next segment of our show is called Imperfect Parent. Imperfect Parent. So, Imperfect Parent. Amber goes to Napa. She gets her flight canceled. And she comes back. And at this point, I've taken Wild out on like a full day. I fully expect Amber to be gone. I'm going to put Wild to sleep and I'm going to get some time alone. Nope. 
didn't happen. Uh, she comes back, and Wilde is so happy to see her, and I, I, I am also happy to see her that she got home safely. And Amber does this really funny video. She, we script it out, right? She's like, "Go ahead and put on like you know, Baby Shark," and I didn't even know that Wilde had been listening to Baby Shark. She's addicted. Yeah, she's like, and she does the clapping. Oh, it's so cute! She, and Wilde's like full on stomping. Wilde is full on jumping. She is a jumper. She's a climber. She runs up walls. She's learning to do like flips and shit. She's gonna be fucking Spider Man, um, Spider Woman, Spider Gwen, Black Black Spider Gwen, mixed mixed spider gwen mm -hmm. and super excited and amber does this whole bit of like i hate it here she very funny video go watch it she puts this on facebook well take it from tiktok there. instagram instagram all this but facebook is where it's at right if you want to see some some aunties getting in on amber's business and making assumptions about her uh be on Facebook. Facebook yes, is a yes. wild ride. They people the don't understand like in the building. Yeah, they don't Facebook. understand sarcasm on Facebook. I've no, discovered, no, no. or like just that we're not we're not here to like share political opinions. Like we we leave that to like the books we read and and um to like our voting. And so face we just want you to laugh, right? And so people took what you did very seriously. The one woman. So why don't you uh, take it from there? I think okay. So I have um. A, a huge supporter of mine. Uh, should I should I make up a name for this person, or because she? Yeah, let's just me. call her Gail. <laughs> let's let's say her name is Gail, right? Uh, Gail <laughs> was none too pleased about the fact that I made a video being annoyed with my child because I missed my flight. Is she a supporter of yours? I mean, she found her way to my page. So okay. what, what's it called? With I don't know you, but you hate me. A fan. A fan. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. I think we would do ourselves a disservice if we didn't invite Gail in here today to do the Oh, yeah. Yeah, we actually found Gail. We found Gail. Let me just go get her real quick, okay? Yeah, yeah. Please welcome to the stage, Gail. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, I was busy watching my 10 children, but I am prepared to give my take on the video. Yeah, Gail, I'm so glad that you're here today. Um, what about this video made you so upset? It, as you know, as a mother of ten, ten, I gave birth to ten children, unmedicated, of course, all in the woods, you know. And so, I it disturbs me when women are acting like they're bothered by their children. Uh -huh. They act tired. Every meal should be home cooked. Every child should be homeschooled. And some women out there seem to think that. That is tiresome work, you see, and it's exactly an honor and a privilege to care for your children day and night. Have you ever been annoyed by any of your children? Not ever? one of the ten. Not a single child I've ever raised have I ever been tired of, annoyed by. I love them all. I have time to spend with all you, you ten. You sound like a good Christian woman. You know, lying is a sin. I mean, I, I just don't believe you. I've never told a lie in my life. I only speak truth as a mother. Do Do you know Do you know Amber personally? Have you ever talked to her? Yes, Amber. One of my the, my the the seventh child of mine is a fan of Amber, so I thought that I would give her an opportunity. I'm sorry, but have you ever talked to her? Well, I see that the content that she makes uh -huh. as a mother, and I have, in fact, commented on the content. So that's like talking to her, <laughs> yes. Okay, but you, you know that social media things are not real. Like yes, it is. I, I will, in fact, give you uh, my take on it. I'll tell you exactly what I said on Amber's uh, video, and you'll feel okay, free Gail, to feel please. free to post the comment here as I read it. Are you ready for this? Here's what I think. It's truly sad that a mother would post that she dislikes being with her child. Consequences ahead. I had to change my comment from hate to dislike, because so many lovely women explained and supported this sister. Different experiences bring about different opinions. Some women are beyond 
fabulous. I decided to give her a compliment near the end. Yes. How how is that? That sounds like negging. Do you know what negging is? What did you call me? No, I didn't call you anything. Negging. It's it's what men do. They do it really well. So basically, they give a compliment. So they'll say something like, "Oh, you're you're cute for like a black girl or something." Mm. That that would be, or "You're cute for a big girl" or something. That's negging. So you give them a compliment while simultaneously tearing them down. So it sounds like you gave her, you tore her down. I didn't tear her down. I simply reminded her that consequences are ahead if she continues her behavior of disliking her daughter. Yes. Well, I I know her personally, and I actually don't think she dislikes her daughter. She she dislikes her husband for sure, but she... Oh, yes, the white fellow, yes. <laughs> she loves her daughter dearly. And she also loves her husband She hates much. her husband. She hates her child. She hates her dog. She hates herself. It sounds like you hate her. I don't hate. I told you in my comment, I changed it from hate to dislike. So I dislike her. No, no. I think your comment was like you were talking about her. She doesn't like her child. You know what's so And fast? there's no mother that should ever complain about their child. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm I'm so glad that you were able to come on the show. I yes, think of you uh you can go back to your wood and your home cooked meals and um Thank to you. your lack of like consensual sex for the past thirty years. So I sleep with my husband whenever he requests. Isn't that how you do it with your wife? Neither my wife nor my husband, so yeah. Every time he gets hard, I hop on the dick. Do you hear me? Is your penis hard now? <laughs> if so, I'll go get your wife at once. <laughs> That's the only thing they're good for. Well, I have to go back. I have fresh bread cooling in the window. Anything else for me? No, I'm I'm quite tired of this Jeez. conversation. So rude. I'll go get Amber at once. <laughs> um, so that was Gail, who did comment something very mean to Amber on Facebook. Uh, you can go check that out. Um, there was a. <laughs> hey, baby. I'm so glad you you didn't miss much. What that bitch talking about? No, she, just mostly you. She's obsessed with you. Obs- isn't she obsessed yeah, with me? I think she loves you. That's I think insane. she has I like some too. some hidden lesbian desires that she is displaying through her aggression by attacking you. I just love at the end how she called me quite fabulous, beyond fabulous. Some women are beyond fabulous. That's a compliment, right? No, I don't. I don't know what she meant. And also, what did she mean by con? I should have asked. I should have asked her. Consequences ahead. Yeah. Yeah, she knows something I don't. Yeah, I guess maybe like when you don't want to be around your children, then your children will not want to be around you or something like that. I I guess death is coming. Is what she? Maybe it's this idea of like the like you should spend every single moment with your kids to be happy. Yeah. She said consequences. I got some consequences coming my way. I'm I'm just so grateful that Gail got an opportunity to come down here, clear the air. There's really no bad blood. And I think her and I are going to get along yeah. for future videos. She's going to stick around. Want to move on to the next segment? Yeah. Please. The next segment of our show is called the I Do's and Don'ts of Relationships. I do, I do. I do, I do. I do, I do. I do, I do. Um, we got some fun voicemails today. The first one is about a low-key racist neighbor. So this is a, a relationship that she is has been forced. Architectural design. Uh, you ready for this one? Hi, Ben, Ember, and Wild. Here we go. I'm a black woman living in America. I have a neighbor next to me. They're old Italians from New York. We've been neighbors for three years. Um, and they've been married for about 50-something years Unfortunately, last November, the husband has passed away. Since then, the wife has been making these off-brand comments uh, with regards to race and uh, politics. And I believe, I just, all I can say is that ever since the passing of her husband, she's making these comments when he was alive, they never had these type of conversations with us. Recently, during the Super Bowl, when they were uh, displaying uh, the national anthem, there was an NFL player who happened to be black, and he was crying during that time. So I was like, ah. Oh, why is he crying? Something must have happened. And her comment was, well, you know, he respects our country. He loves our country. He respects our flag. He doesn't have, he's not doing all that kneeling crap. 
I took offense to that because me as a black person in America and I'm from the Caribbean, I know what kneeling for the flag represents as a black person in this country. And the fact that she was bold enough to make this comment in front of me, I don't know if I want to maintain this relationship. And she's way older than I am. I'm in my 40s. She's in her 60s. And I feel like I no longer need to foster this relationship because why should I continuously be involved or surround myself with people that I, 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 who just don't have any regard for my feelings or, you know, who just can't say things in a respectful manner? So my question to you guys is, do I continue on maintaining a friendship with this person or and just, like, kind of, like, try to educate them, which I don't think I should because there's too many books and documentaries and films out there where she could learn, but I guess they decided not to do so, or just slowly inch away from this relationship and just just let it all go together because it's a waste of time for me now that I see what her true codes are. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Bye. Well, as the white person in the room, I'm going to ask the black person in the room to talk first. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's get real for a second. We know that this 60-plus-year-old white lady is not going to do the research on her own. Yeah. Right. I think we're. I let's stick on let's stick on that point a little bit more. Do yeah. you mind? Because I've heard that argument quite a bit where people are like, I don't want to educate. Like, there's and we're talking about maybe specifically maybe abortion or gay rights or right. racism, right? And people are like, oh, I don't want to educate. Um, I hear this both from like white people, black people, Latino people, whatever. Like all the identities that might of have been put down. And I think we need to understand how information is received in our society, mm -hmm. right? Just because there's information out there doesn't mean that is it is accessible yeah. to people. Because because the way we segment segment ourselves in the social media age. So for example, if you are a conservative, you actually won't have access to liberal news outlets who might educate you on this because your conservative algorithm is not going to feed you that information. Right. Even your Google searches might not give you that information. I would agree. And if, if you're a conservative and you look up on your algorithm, this, even the term anti-racism, all you're going to see is negative information. So I, I, th I think it's important for us to stop this um, argument. Like, people need to go educate themselves because yeah, that, I agree. the education they're going to receive is actually not the education that yeah. you with a personal relationship can actually provide. So that's the first thing I'm going to I'm going to talk about when it comes to that argument but yeah yes. keep going. i will say that doesn't negate the fact that you might not want to do the labor of yes. educating and them. that's that's I just, the second part yeah, yes yeah i just i wanted to make that crystal clear i knew that you wanted to make that clear too but i just wanted to like reiterate that right um because it is i i definitely had that mentality at one point in my life too i was like google it girl google why you offended me google why what you said was yeah. messed up so it's it's hard because like what would she google yeah how would why? that google like she didn't even like... she didn't even know she offended you yeah um, probably because if she's if she's as unaware as she sounds, she didn't even know she offended you, so she wouldn't even know to start googling and start looking things up. Let's even talk about going to the library, right? You said this woman's sixty years old. Does she go to the library, right? Would right. she go and pick up yeah. a book to read about <laughs> kneeling down? Because kneeling down is are there books about that specifically? Yeah. What articles about kneeling down would she even be able to obtain? Because right. the Atlantic. Liber uh, liberals will r r read the Atlantic. Conservatives won't because the Atlantic. There's an article about the history of kneeling down and why kneeling down instead of like um, I, I think kneeling down is actually more respectful. And I remember reading an article mm -hmm. on the Atlantic and it explained it very well. Um, I got you, but that's not going to be the access. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say like I think the person who was probably educating her the most was her husband and unfortunately and and the person that she was probably listened to the most was her husband and now that he has passed she has lost her partner in life and she has lost <laughs> mm -hmm. somebody who will be like bitch you can't say that or or uh, maybe her and her partner were the ones just talking all the racist stuff all the maybe. time maybe oh and of course like, and then, we, then we could just keep I it know in a here little sweet old racist white lady are you kidding they they all taught me that was my whole education a growing educational up. Educational career, yeah. Um, again, these are not, we are not, I just want to 
be, uh, reiterate that we are not crying for her. We are not. She's not the victim. You are. Can I can I share a story about a little old lady that I keep running into whose husband died? Yeah, sure. And uh, it sort of reminds me of this. So there's. And then a, I'm gonna tell her what she should do. Okay. Yeah. So I walk wild every day, and there's this older woman who uh, I think at one point saw I was wearing like a New York shirt. Okay. And she approached me, you know, lonely. She was walking in the morning. <laughs> okay. And she says, oh, you're from, I'm, I'm from, from New York. And I was like, oh, I'm from Long Island. She's also from Long Island. So we talked. I was like, oh, I you know she was wearing a Dodgers cap. And I was like, oh, you're a Dodgers fan. She said, oh, yeah, I'm a Dodgers fan. And we, I say, oh, I grew up at Shea Stadium where the Mets used to play at one point. My dad was taking me to games pretty regularly uh, to New York City. So we're talking about baseball. And then at one point, she just stops the conversation. And she's like, you know, I feel like the Dodgers, when they had that, that those, those gays come and do an event, their winning, their winning games went down after that. You know, and I feel like that was God judging them. So for those who don't know... Um, the LA Dodgers during Pride Month last year invited these like nuns uh, who sort like, of like like the drag queens, the drag yeah. queen nuns who sort of make fun of Christianity, Catholicism, and mm. which I think is fair, deserves to be made fun of. Lots of priests raping boys and getting away with it, um, which is come on. Uh, and she was like, This was God's judgment you know, on them. She's like, and I'm, I'm all for, you know, and they always, oh, do they this always thing. try to save it. They're like, I'm all I'm for, all for but this. I'm all but I'm for not. this. Yeah. Uh, she's like, why, why would they invite these? It, that was just dividing. She's like, it's like the LA, LA Dodgers just want divided everybody by inviting these like gay performers, these drag performers. And, um, it sort of like shook me a little bit that we went to just talking about New York and pizza and baseball to, the re and her she's like the reason the Dodgers started losing after that and she's like and and I've been all I've been all on the the fan websites and everybody agrees with me is that be, they oh. uh, they invited the, the everybody agrees the drag with me queen. is the, the scariest part because it's she's not realizing like this is your algorithm this is your yeah and she's right this is your group. everybody is going to agree with in you. this group yeah in this group and she's but her it was this crazy analysis that Dodgers were losing yeah. And their their wins dropped after they invited the the mm. queens to How did perform. you respond? I would uh I think my response was like I, I don't I don't think like having a drag show would make people lose. Like that's I'm like, that's that sounds that's weird. And she's like, Yeah, but you know, you know, God, you know, God does everything. I'm like, Well, God also doesn't really stop kids having brain cancer so why would he care more about baseball than like you know like yeah i i sort of i was like well god doesn't yeah what did she say to that she's like i'm like i don't think god cares about baseball i mean he's got i think i made <laughs> a joke a about it yeah. i made a joke about it i was like i think i don't know if god cares about baseball he's, he sounds i mean like he sounds pretty busy type of thing you know yeah, yeah, yeah. um she's like yeah you know maybe and I like try to change the conversation because I don't I don't want to talk to this person about yeah her, like her in, her explicit homophobia right um and her her mind she she's never homophobic they're never homophobic yeah, yeah, yeah. she was like no I, I know I like drag shows but it's just this kind of drag show is bad it's always that it's like it's anti I'm okay with black people standing up for themselves but not in this setting was this the right was this yeah. football game the right place to do yes, it yes exactly like, so call out racism somewhere else like that what an inconvenience yeah it was such a it was such a bizarre. I felt like it stepped into like the twilight zone because right. you think you're having one conversation, yeah, and, and then you're someone taken just aback. yeah. Someone is like, "I'm gonna say something," and I get like the the nuns of like, uh, just uh, I'll look them. I'll look up the exact name, but they sort of you know do like a mock crucifixion. It is if you are religious, you would get very offended by them, mm -hmm. and I think she was getting to that. But I'm like. They're making fun of something that I think deserves to be made fun of because it's caused a lot of pain. Specifically, the nuns, the Catholic Church, it's caused you. a lot of pain to a lot of people, and uh, it's been anti-thought for you know thousands of years at this point, uh, you know over a thousand years. Um, so I, 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 
I don't like invite her over. Like I won't invite her over. Right. I have no desire to like interact with her, but she's very lonely. And every time I see her, you say um, hey, you and I it, say hi, and she comes pushing. and talks to me. But I saw her again today, and I like walked across the street because I just didn't feel like talking to her. Yeah, they don't even realize the way that they've. Maybe they do, but they're just like they're still like. Oh, yeah. well. But I I didn't have a connection with her, and it sounds like in this this person has yeah. Like you have a this person's like their connection. daily neighbor. Like not only that, but y'all were watching the Super Bowl together. Yeah, that's that sounds like you're a little bit more closer to this neighbor. Yeah, I think I'm just saying you you do not to the person that made this call. You do not have to have a conversation with this neighbor. I want to preface by saying that. I do want to say that if I were you, I would. You know what? I just this is kind of irrelevant. Um, but I just. I, I didn't even tell you this. I recently blocked somebody on Facebook, a white lady, who, what me, of course, obviously some white people follow me, but like the vast majority of people that follow me are black or black women because, you know, I make the content. Um, but I made this, I, I, I'm not gonna say I felt triggered, but it's just, it's been so long since somebody has been like explicitly racist to me. Like they've been implicitly, but like <clears throat> so long since I've seen a comment that yeah. I was like, oh, you just a straight, you're like a racist. Yeah, you're just a weirdo racist. Like you would bring slavery <laughs> back type of racist. Exactly. So this person, and it, and it might have been a bot. That's why I'm not going to push No, much. bots bots don't do that. They don't. They and, don't. I'm not going to get myself worked over it. I just blocked her and kept it pushing. But I remember thinking like, dang, I have not had to just straight up block a racist in a long time. Like, good for me. I make a recap of my day in Napa, right? And I'm doing... The commute there and the rain and the once I finally get there, I'm drinking bottles. We're singing on the way to the venue and we sit down, we have dinner and I'm enjoying my time with my girls. Like, here's black luxury, you know. Uh, and this one white woman commented I, I, of all those images that she saw, she commented, I hope they tipped. Mm. Like, I hope you ladies tipped at the restaurant. Mm. <laughs> we're we're in Napa. We're tipping forty percent, if not fifty. Like, we'll, 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 there are doctors here, lawyers, social media icons at this at this dinner. Yes. Why would we not tip? Why don't you say it right? Like, yeah. and I was like, you know what? I could go back and forth. I was like, I could let people. I tagged so many of my line sisters in the video, so I was like. I need to block this person because like they're not, they're not used to the people just random strangers. They're not used to really random mean, strangers. And so I was like, things. I don't want We're anybody sort of to, to Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm used to people being rude. And of course I go to her page and she's like, Mother of five, in the name of Jesus. She has some verse there. Oh God. Yeah. Christians are so racist, especially the white ones. Literally. I'm just like, first cunt, six nine. I hope y'all tipped. She's like, a cunt. Like, what do you say? She's a cunt. <laughs> I was just like, I have to delete and block this woman so fast because I know my friends are gonna like see this and read the comments. I was like, who sees a video of black girls in luxury in Napa <laughs> sipping fresh prosecco and champagne? Uh, a racist. A racist says, oh, I just hope you ladies tipped. I see you're eating filet mignon yeah. and prawns and paella. Please don't be like. Regular black people and not tip. I bet. She, I bet this bitch doesn't tip. Are you kidding me with five kids? Are you kids? kidding? Are you kidding? She doesn't even go out to eat. Probably. Guess what? People of all races are shit tippers. Sure, there have probably been black people that didn't tip you well, but there have also been white people. I, I've worked in the service industry. White people don't always be tipping either. Like d different races of people don't always tip. So I just, it just irked my soul. Like, ugh. Yeah. No. Seriously, to hell with this woman. Um, I hope something bad happens to her and the five children. And I'm I'm thinking that I was gonna regret saying that, but I don't. I hope all five of them. <laughs> I hope not a single child sees peace. <laughs> no, not like okay, I right, hope all her kids grow up to be gay. That's, <laughs> oh! what, that's a good one, right? No, because then they're gonna have to deal with her. As no, a no, they they would cut her off. They would cut her off. I hope all of them grow up to be gay and are in interracial relationships. Oh my god. With black people that don't tip. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, Amber Man. I'm calling because I have been talking to a guy since November. And, you know, talking and dating and being official are like, you know, totally different things. We have not yet made it official. 
but um, judging by our interactions, like, I feel like if we were official, it would match up with the way that we've been interacting with each other. Uh, so my question is, at one point, do you feel like a man should start, like, celebrating holidays with you? Because, like I said, we started talking in November. Uh, we went through Christmas together. My birthday was in January. Um, Valentine's Day is today. And, like, no gifts, no celebration, no nothing. And um, while that's fine or whatever, I feel like on my birthday when I told him, it, I told him it was my birthday like a week after because I feel like that's not my man. I don't have to tell him it's my birthday. But when I did tell him, he was like, oh, yeah, like I don't celebrate birthdays. And I'm like, that's cool, but, you know, I celebrate my birthday X, Y, Z. Then Valentine's Day comes up. He doesn't acknowledge it or anything like that um, or even, like, plan to hang out. Because even if we don't do anything, like, super special, we could have hung out or something like that. So I feel like at what point are you dating somebody? Do you start, you know, celebrating and looking for those big expressions of love? Thank you. Are you listening to this, darling? Yeah, I'm listening, yeah. I'm talking to the listener now. Listener, listen to me. Your man is broke. (laughs) I don't celebrate birthdays. That's broke boy language. Do you have anything to 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 add? The the question was when do you start celebrating holidays? So when he gets a job. When he gets a job is the question. Uh perhaps um but if someone let's presume this guy might have a job already. Like she sounds like an adult. Broke. Broke. Okay, so he could be. But when it comes to when um, I think it could happen within a week, right? Um, also, it sounds like y'all are not exclusive, which is fine. But if you like to celebrate holidays and if you're hanging out and talking, and I put, you know, quote unquote talking because y'all are probably doing things that doesn't involve talking, um, like fucking. Uh, so for me, like, I think it's really important to make your desires known. So if you want to do something for Valentine's Day, like sometimes you have to train the partner you're with, like like a dog almost. You yeah, know? but so that, Amber that dog won't hunt because he's broke. <sighs> yeah, that that could be true. Like but let me let me talk about myself. For example, I generally You were a bad gift giver when you were broke. Yes. And you had to teach me and you were very clear like this is something that you have to learn because this is important for me. And because you were important to me, I decided to take those steps. And I think these are the little things that you can really tell if this is the person you want to be with, is that if you make a needs known saying, like, this is my birthday, and he says, I don't celebrate birthdays, which is fine. But if, because, you know, maybe he's part of the Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah or, Witnesses or whatever. But, he's a part of the broke witnesses. But what he could do is African if he cares. Methodist, Episcopal, broke. What he could do, let me finish. He's a broke Baptist. Is that he could make so, – because even if you're broke, Amber, you can still do something, something. little. You can of go course. out and get a rock and paint it. You're right. You're right. Right? <laughs> Just <laughs> – I prefer I don't celebrate birthdays. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just but, kidding. yeah, if, so you made that need known, known and he doesn't care. And so doesn't in care. the future, this is a good indicator, is that in the future when you make other needs known, like I need, you know, for you to take our kid to – the doctor, or I need. Yeah, this, yeah, back up. They, they don't have no ch- children. I know, yet. but they I'm don't saying, have but, no children. But it's with these this little man. things. Like it is if little you things. let, well, it's need, like, hey, I would like job. you to open my door when we go somewhere, or and they're like, like, I don't I, open doors, or like, yeah, or you say, I would like to go out to eat at this specific spot, and he's like, well, I don't, I don't want to go, but you've made your need known, and mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I don't like Italian food, I don't want Italian food. So part of being with someone. Even in like just a talking to is that you give and take, right? Of course. And it sounds like you probably give to him and he's not really taking right. any. And he probably takes a lot. So he should give something to you. And like, I agree. Also for Valentine's Day, um, you could make the need known. It's like, I would like to do something for Valentine's Day. I would like Day. not even something. Just say exactly what you want to do. Like, hey, um, I would like to I would like you to buy me some chocolates from the, down at the CVS. Yeah. Get, yeah. Don't expect borrow some to cash do it. Some, some from my mom. From your mom. Here, I'll even give you cash if you're broke. Go get me some chocolates from CVS and come back. 
and let, let's eat chocolates together and watch something on Netflix. That sounds super cute. Right? Like, it's I would so like to simple. Do that tonight. <laughs> yes, we can do that. It's so simple to do these kinds of things. It is. Like, keep it very simple and make it very explicit. Right? And if he still is not taking the bite, he don't he doesn't give a fuck about you. Yeah, agreed. So are there women in your life or or men who have asked you to do things that you would hit them with this response because you weren't interested? I I think like I think now, probably maybe at that point because I was imma- immature, you know. And maybe I was like philosophically. Oh, I have a, a someone. Didn't so, maybe we've talked about this on the pod before? But didn't someone want you to go to a dance with them or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my my girlfriend in college. Yes. She yes. wanted, and I was like, oh, I don't do dances, and that was just me being incredibly selfish, and like I stayed home and like read a book. I think I was reading the Bible. This is my very very. I'm pretty sure I was reading the Bible. Very religious stage. I'm like, why would I go to a dance? And like you know, this is about. And she asked you. She was like, "Hey, I really yeah, want you to go she, to this dance." Yeah, and then I saw a picture of her. She was like pumping gas at a gas station. She looked super cute, and I remember being like, "Fuck, I missed out on that." You know, like hanging Where out. Where did you see this picture of her? Um, like after the dance. Yeah, after just, the dance. Just clarify. Just, yeah, just no, clarify. after the after. Yeah, she was like wearing the dress I saw from a the dance. Of her last week, and she looked super cute. She was like, <laughs> amazing, and I really missed out. Maybe if we went to the dance, I would be with her, and Wild would have a white mom. Um, just, oh, I'm joking. That's Wolf. a joke. Yeah, um, I disagree. That <laughs> I disagree. Wild wouldn't be wild without you because of DNA and stuff. But my point is, uh, yeah, I think if you make your needs known. And if someone cares about you, they'll listen. And I obviously, I don't think I cared about this. And I was also very selfish. And that's why she broke up with me, for sure. I was a selfish piece of shit. And she did the right thing. So cheer, cheers to you. Um, what would you call oh, this? Oh, so you L. saw her in the, the dress from the dance? Yeah, she pumping, pumping gas at the gas station. And it was like, I remember that image and me being like, dang, she looked really cute. Like, why did I go? And I felt guilty. I think later I told her, I was like, I apologize. That was fucked up good yeah but she still broke up with my ass and because i was a bad i was a bad boyfriend and so you should break up with your man if this if this becomes a trend not just around holidays or special occasions like you should always be with somebody who celebrates you and i feel like you know even even if they don't want that kind of celebration like right but you and and to be fair some people don't understand until you teach them so it's not intuitive I agree. I agree. like if you like to be that could be a part of your love language I've definitely had to talk to you yeah, about like, like hey I, this means a lot to me this yeah, opportunity please. and I was like you know what yes let me go get a yeah. suit and dress nice for this like premiere or something let's go do <clears throat> this you. thing cuz sometimes um, Ben doesn't see value in certain opportunities if I had to like if we have to pay to do those money. opportunities, yeah, money. Not I'm like a little big, cheap. Not big money, but it'll just be like something like like I had to explain to Ben. It's like it's like getting into your dream college. You're like, this is the dream college I wanted to get into. Mm-hmm. Sure, we had to pay to go to the school, but this is the dream college. But I you wanted, shouldn't have paid it's like for I, education. Uh, let's say, for example, this wasn't what you were upset about, obviously, but it's like I got into this film festival. I'm really excited about it. You'll be like, well, what are you happy about? Now we got to fly to go to the festival, and I'm like, uh. You did, I, did I say that? No, but you recently did something like that about something where you were like, we have to pay to go to this opportunity. So, like, what are we celebrating? Hmm. And so I had to be like, we're celebrating me being in this space with the creatives that I want to be with. Like, that's what's exciting. Like, sure, that might come with some costs, but... Like, I think it really took us a minute to... I think I think just, like, the way that you said it... Like, I think you were genuinely asking, like... What what all what all encompasses how much joy you feel about this opportunity that you got and that but it came out as like well why would you celebrate, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So we've been talking more about like you got to give me some more praise, and I got to explain to you the full scope of like yo this thing that I just got means a, a great deal to me. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Just just ask what you want to be celebrated for. For some people, they need to know it. And I think there's this idea in love or relationships that people just need to know. Like, you just need to know. Right. You need to know what I I'm like. I'm just saying, but sometimes you just act like your father with that. It's like, well, what? You know how your dad is. Yeah, like a little cheap. A little cheap, cheap. 
Yeah, money money is tricky when things cost money, like especially going to nice places or doing nice things. And Amber wants to do it or buying nice things. I'm like, ah, like I'd rather save this money for a home or yeah, or our. Where I'm like, no, let's celebrate that we're going to go to a country we've never been to before. You're like, but it costs money. It's like, okay, well, stay your ass at the fucking house then. But you coming or not? But that's where the conversation has to happen. It's like, okay, that's where you're, you're coming from, but let me provide. Like one of the things, one of the things I value in our relationship is that I hold on to my beliefs loosely. So I'm always willing to change. You're like, convince me otherwise. I'm like, I I don't like, want to. But, I just but want that's to part of being a relationship. I know, but I'm just like, can't we just celebrate that we are at the point where we can go to an no. uh, international no. cu- uh, country every no. year sometimes sustainably? I, no, because sometimes I, I need like the reason why I need. Yeah, it's I like need to okay. Talk as a child, it. did you think you would get to go to a different country every year? Right, which is why I'm like, oh, this is not what adults do. I know, but they I hate stay that. home. I'm, I'm like the, but the time I feel like the time I'm spending convincing you that this is cool is now I'm just like, oh, forget it. Like I'll, I'll go celebrate with somebody else. No, I I think that that's where you need to mature a little bit and recognize like, hey, like just because our defaults are these things doesn't mean that we should like ignore that. Right, we should yeah, but it's be hard able to have I a think, conversation. When I think like something exciting is happening for me, and then I try to tell you like this exciting thing is happening for me, and then you're like, okay, explain to me how this is exciting. I'm like, yeah, just be excited. I don't know. Sometimes like, you just don't know. Be happy for me. Like sometimes, okay, it's like it's like well, so and so is getting married. Well, what does that have to do with us? They're happy. Like, I that's a terrible example. I would never but do that. That's how it feels to me when it's like. Can't you just take cues from my body language and how I'm acting about this thing that it, it, it's a big deal to me? Yeah. I know. I you could, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But sometimes, like, you're so, your response is so, um, my response is so knee jerk. Like, yes. you know, where I'm like, okay, like, how are we going? I'm, I'm going into logistical mode. Especially when I'm, again, it comes down to money. Like, money is yeah. super stressful to me. And, like, I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, because like the way the way I was raised, like my parents uh, were very explicit and like they talked about their money woes all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's always been a source of anxiety for me. Even when my family had money woes, it was still like, "All right, y'all, fun challenge. We ain't got no hot water. So how about we get in the kitchen and whoever's water heats the quickest gets the th- like." I don't know. My mom just had a really good way of spinning. There was a way. There was happen. a time you didn't, you couldn't pay the hot water bill. Yeah, it wasn't many days, but you know we. I feel like every child had a hot water out mm. energy or, or just something where it's like, we can't go out to eat every Wait, spot. But hot water? I don't. Yeah. Really? Like, you know how like you have cold water, but not heat. Like, oh, yeah. you didn't eat heat in Georgia. Not really. So if you didn't pay the heat, it was like the hot water part. Oh, okay. And then that was back in the day when it's like, well, I thought I mailed the check on Tuesday, but I guess I did it. So we got to wait for this. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, I remember. Yeah. Some of those. But I'm talking like not enough money for groceries type of shit. No, I will honestly say, to my memory, I don't remember us not having enough money for groceries. Yeah, like so I I get that's a huge source. But I remember of like sleeping in the same bed as both of my siblings at one point in my life. Yeah, I definitely shared a room. Yeah, lived in like, the basement. Yeah, but uh, the the point being is like, be willing to change is important. Yeah. And if this person's not willing to change for you, like I'm willing to change for Amber. Good. Sometimes she's not willing to try to convince me to change. Can, or can can we just do like, hey, Ben, I got this. We'll role play. Baby, I got this email that this um, I submitted myself for a Webby Award and I got it. Congratulations. It's great. Yes. I want to go out tonight to celebrate myself. Yeah, let's do it. Does it, McDonald's sound good? It sounds amazing. You know I love a fry. Okay. I, lo- I love me a large fry. I thought you were going to say, like, oh, let's do something a little bit more expensive no, than no, no. McDonald's. I think you even saying that will be great. Really? I think oh, what's really? been happening is, hey, baby, I submitted myself for a Webby and I got it. What's a Webby? It's uh, like, well, it's it's like internet award. It's like, so you paid okay. to submit yourself to an award <laughs> and you got it. Oh, like, do you, did you have to pay? to? Submit? Yes, you you have to pay to submit yourself to awards. And I don't how, know if I got how it much? yet. See, this is the conversation <laughs> where I'm just like, it means something to me. I'm going to apply. Yeah. So I'm saying, if you even say, we, let's go to McDonald's. Let's go to McDonald's is a better response than, what's that? 
It's like it's yeah. something you don't know about that Alex so, playing. So tone is also really important here, right. where I could do a better job being like, oh, oh, what's that? I, tell me more. Tell me yeah. more. Tell me more is a good one. Saying what's that? Yeah, yeah. you'd be tell like, I'm super happy for you. I'll be honest. I don't know what Webby is. Can you tell me more about it? Yeah, I think that's, that's all great. you have to do. Should we sign off? Yeah. I love you. I love you. Celebrate. Too. Yeah, and um, you know, convince me. Let's be willing to change and meet each other. Convince you. Yeah. Why, why I gotta convince you? Well, can your initial reaction be joy and then be like, All right. can you, baby, I love you so much Just and I'm glad that this makes it. you happy. Can what you explain? please explain to me what this is? Explain to me more, yeah. Like, yeah. explain what's got you so happy about I, this. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Not like, what is that? <laughs> I didn't know it cost money to uh, submit to the Webbies, so that's good to know. Always good to know. Oh my God. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the of Fly on the Wallin'. Here's your outro music. Thank you for listening. I love y'all. Ben, good luck in life. Uh, <laughs> bye, y'all. <laughs> you know they're from TikTok, because those laughs keep you coming, because they're wilding all the time. Before wild throws a tantrum, listen to our silly anthem, the 